OK, so when we think about molecular term symbols, once we add in multiple electrons, so in this video we'll do D2 in an octahedral field, uh, then we also get electron-electron repulsion problems, so then we'll get more states that arise from that. So in an octahedral field, we still have our eg T2g orbitals. But now we can have three different configurations. So again, configurations, not terms. So we could have both our electrons down here. I'm not showing uh, states. So configuration, we have two electrons in our T2g orbitals. Uh, we could have, we could excite one electron into the eg orbitals. So this would be T2g1, eg1. Keep in mind that this ligand field splitting is the same for all three configurations. The splitting is our 10dq. OK. And then our third configuration would be if we have both our electrons in the eg orbitals. So eg t2g. And then this would therefore be an eg2 configuration. So each of these configurations should have multiple terms or states that arise from electron electron repulsion within these configurations. So if we were to just finally draw, uh, when we make our final uh, kind of state picture, so if I have this as my energy axis, we know that for the configuration of T2G2, let me put this as a line over here, this terms arising from this, whether they split off or not do electron electron, electron repulsion, are going to be lowest energy. So, so let's, let's call this arbitrarily zero. And then terms that arise from this configuration, T2G1, EG1, because we had to put one electron across this ligand field splitting, uh, it's got to be higher energy than T2G configurations by around 10 dq, 10 dq. And then any terms that arise from this configuration, EG2, must be even higher in energy because we have to put two electrons across this gap. So this will be around 20 dq. And again, each of these configurations will have terms that split off due to electron-electron repulsion. So we might have things that kind of split off here. So we don't know what those are yet, but let's talk about how we get them. So uh, rather than starting at the very bottom, the uh, actual easiest thing to do would be, let's start, start first at this T2G1, EG1 configuration. We want to find out what states that we have. So what we can do is we actually want to find um, the possible spins and the possible orbital symmetries. So for spins, we have two electrons. We could have s equals 1. So this would be both electrons are unpaired, so they're pointing in the same direction. Or we could have s equals 0 if one electron's up, one electron's down, and vice versa. So those are our possible spin states. For our possible orbital states, what we want to do now is we know before when we have a one electron configuration that the orbital symmetry of that electron is going to be the same as the symmetry of the orbitals that it's in. But now we have two electrons, so we want to find kind of like the overall wave functions that we can get out. So here, uh, we can then do the cross products, or the, sorry, the direct products that we did before in class. So what we'll take is our T2G orbitals times EG orbitals, and then uh, if you multiply this out and then reduce down, decompose down to the sum of irreducible representations, what we get out is this multiplies out to be T1g plus T2g. So this is our direct product. Again, what you t do is you go to your character table in octahedral, and then you multiply under each column the T2g uh, character by the EG character for each column. Then that adds up to a certain number, and then we decompose down to this sum of irreducible representations. T1g plus T2g. And what this means is that then uh, we can then get out our uh, spin terms. We have these two possible st spin states for each of them. So what this means is that so 2s plus 1 is going to be a triplet state for spin equals 1. Spin equals 0 again is a singlet state. So the final terms that we have are going to be triplet T1g plus singlet T1g plus triplet T2g plus singlet T2g. 
because we have triplet and singlet possibilities for each of our orbital combinations. OK, so uh, having done this, we can then order. So by Hund's rule, uh, we want the triplet state to be the lowest energy. Um, so the final orbital energy, uh, the final, final state energy ordering, rather, um, which you can't, get, you can't get, the, get the other ones out. We know the triplet state must be lowest. So this actually splits off into four. And then so this ends up being, they had to actually find that spectroscopically, triplet T1G, triplet T2G, singlet T2G, singlet T1G. So those are our four different terms that arise from this T2G1, EG1 configuration. And again, we can get that out by this direct product and from these spin terms. Uh, to kind of confirm this for you, uh, we can actually also count our degeneracy. So the states also degenerate orbitals. And a triplet state is triply degenerate. So this should be 9 whole degeneracy times 3, then also 9 and 3. So these are added up together. So this equals 24. And then so in principle, we should have uh, 24 possible microstates. So if you think about this, we have our upper set of boxes with one electron. And then we have our lower set of boxes, one electron. So if we do our probability formula, here we have um, four different ways to fill this box. Here we have six different ways to fill this electron. So four times six, this equals 24. So check and check. So uh, this is how you approach this problem for T2G1, EG1. But it's going to get a little bit more complicated when we have the two electrons in the same orbital. Um, so I'll actually get to that in the next video because uh, we're going to have to use this approach called descent in symmetry.